everybody. My name is Ilana Brenner. I'm the dietitian here at the Pines. I do miss seeing everybody in person, but for now, due to COVID, we're going to just record uh, a session today. And I don't have a mask on, but I'm the only one in the room except for the cameraman, Tim. Thank you. Hello, He's everyone. Very far away. <laughs> So February is National Heart Month, so we're going to give our heart a little love this month, and we're going to talk about ways of improving heart health. Heart health is the number one cause of death in the United States, except COVID did edge that out in 2020, so in the latter half of 2020, COVID became number one, and heart disease for the first time in a long time went to number two. Uh, but it's still a huge issue. Um, we are finding links. I just read a great article about heart health and COVID, so we're studying them both together now. Uh, but we're going to talk about ways to improve heart health. Um, we just have eight simple steps. Step one is increasing the amount of fruits and vegetables you eat. Uh, fruits and vegetables are just naturally low in fat, low in calories. They're low in sodium if you're getting them fresh. And they do so much to improve your heart health. So you want to make half of your plate fruits and vegetables. Sometimes I'll order two vegetables or I'll fill half my plate with salad. And that way it just leaves less room for the less healthy items on your plate. So if I fill half my plate with salad, I just can't fill it up with spaghetti and meatballs. And that helps me um, stay fuller a little bit longer because it's high in fiber. And plants have natural sterols, which help lower cholesterol. So uh, obviously we um, want you to eat as many as you can in a day. We always say um, two uh, cups of fruit, two and a half cups of vegetable, which seems like a lot, but there are ways that you can increase the amount of fruits and vegetables you're getting in your diet. Um, Tim, do you know the number one? Vegetable Americans eat the most popular? I'm gonna guess green beans. Green beans is very popular. Actually, Americans eat most potatoes and tomatoes. Uh, They're the most popular. I think probably French fries and ketchup if you're thinking the, the American diet. Mm. Um, a far down distant second is a tie between lettuce and onions. So we're probably still talking about hamburgers there. Uh, but we want to get a variety of fruits and vegetables. Different colors have different vitamins, different minerals, and when you eat them together, they work in concert for their, for their health benefits. So you want to get um, maybe some extra ones if you're having a muffin, carrot muffin or zucchini muffin, or you can use lettuce as a tortilla wrap, uh, or put beans instead of uh, ground beef if you're making tacos. You can add uh, vegetables to breakfast, so maybe salsa on your eggs or mushrooms in your omelet. You can add um, a sweet potato, like a little baked sweet potato as a snack. You can uh, add berries to your cereal, it's very popular. So there's a lot of different ways to start increasing the amount of fruits and vegetables that you can get in a day. Okay. And step two is to increase your fiber with whole grains. So you want to make half of your grains whole. So we're trying to step away from the more refined grains that you can find in like cakes and cookies um, and increase your, your amount of whole grains. So 100% whole grain has the whole uh, endosperm, the bran, it's where the iron is, the vitamins, the minerals, the fiber, uh, and you actually remove cholesterol from your body when you digest them. So you really want to increase the amount of whole grain pastas. Uh, they're getting better and better. You want to choose 100% uh, whole wheat bread. You want to look for 100% whole grain oats. That's like our packets of oatmeal here. And um, there is, it's probably easier to see it up here. You want to look for this whole grain um, pointer. Uh, so you want to look for the whole grain because a lot of times people will assume that if it's a little darker in color that it's 100% whole wheat and that's not always the case. It's a little marketing ploy to put some food coloring in there or it might say 12 grain or multi-grain and that doesn't mean it's 100% whole grain either. So they just sprinkled some seeds on top. So 
You really want to look at the nutrition label or you can look for the stamp on the label that says 100% whole wheat. And you can uh, add quinoa, uh, brown rice is a great way to add more whole grains to your diet. And step three, very important, we want to lower the amount of salt in our diet. So uh, I'm going to use high blood pressure and hypertension interchangeably here, so I apologize, they need the same exact thing. I might say salt, I might say sodium, they need the exact same thing, so I apologize for that. But um, Americans eat so much sodium. The American Heart Association recommends to limit to 2,400 milligrams per day, and ideally they really want you at about 1,500 milligrams of sodium per day. And Americans eat much higher than that. Tim, any guesses on how much sodium Americans eat a day? Oh, 3,500 milligrams. Oh, that's so close. That's, I give you an A. That's oh. about 3,400 3, milligrams per day. Well, I blew the veggie question, so. <laughs> but even if we can get down, whatever decrease we can make in our sodium uh, has a tremendous help for our heart health and lowering blood pressure. So where salt goes, fluid follows. Uh, so if you can uh, buy things that are low sodium or choose items that are low sodium, uh, sometimes you already have canned items in your pantry, but you can usually rinse off any canned vegetables if you're concerned about the sodium. Uh, of course, fresh is best. And, and the frozen Stephen bag veggies, they have about 20 to about 35 milligrams of sodium. So they're really a great alternative because they'll stay forever in your freezer. Um, most of the salt in your diet comes from those pre-packaged foods. So if you get the boxed mac and cheese or the boxed rice, this is where about 75% of the added uh, sodium comes from. So if you can, you want to try to make things a little fresher um, and just cut back where you can. You don't need to add salt when you're cooking unless you're baking, but I promise water boils without salt. Um, you know, you don't want to really add it from the table if you can, but, but the bulk of it is really from those um, prepackaged convenience foods. Uh, salt substitutes are great. Uh, Mrs. Dash is usually available, uh, one of the better ones, and herbs. Just be careful if you're using garlic salt, it still has salt right there in the title, or if you're using onion salt, you don't want it to go with that alternative. And if you are using a salt substitute, um, just consult your doctor because they will replace sodium chloride with potassium chloride. And if you're on a renal diet, that's something that they wouldn't want you to have but only if you're on a renal diet. And hypertension is such a big problem, um, people don't realize that uh, more men, more women than men, have high blood pressure over the age of 75. So about 78% of women and 66% for men. And I think that's counterintuitive. I think most people think that, that men are at higher risk, but uh, women are at higher risk for high blood pressure. And high blood pressure, um, People who've had their first heart attack, seven, seven out of 10 have high blood pressure. For people who've had a stroke, eight out of 10 have high blood pressure. For people who have CHF, uh, seven out of 10 have high blood pressure. So they, they call it the silent killer. So it, it's a very serious thing, but we might not always really have side effects. Some people get headaches, some people can almost see their pulse behind their eyes after they've had a little bit of salt. But, any reduction in sodium you can make is hugely helpful. And the good thing about it is when you decrease the amount of sodium in your diet, you become a little more sensitive to it in your taste. So you do start to taste it when you have an added salt. So it might not taste the same the first couple times, but as you decrease the amount of salt in your diet, you do start to become a little more sensitive to the taste of salt. That's what I will show women over the age of 75 have higher rates of hypertension than men. And step four, kind of the opposite of salt is potassium. So we want to increase the amount of potassium in our diet. Potassium is found in tomatoes, potatoes, bananas, oranges. It's really high in prunes, raisins. Um, and the more potassium that you eat, 
the more your body will excrete excess sodium. So it's sort of a balancing act. So uh, the American Heart Association, you're supposed to eat about 4,700 milligrams of potassium a day. That sounds high, but um, a banana has about uh, 1,000 milligrams, uh, 1,200 in a cup of prunes, 600 in potatoes. So you can get there pretty quickly. Um, potassium actually um, will decrease the stress in your arteries and your veins. So it helps really decrease the effects if you've already had blood pressure as well. Step five, this is a big step, is uh, limiting the amount of saturated fat and eliminating trans fats from your diet. So saturated fat, this is what really increases your cholesterol levels, your um, your your bad cholesterol, it, it lowers your good cholesterol. So saturated fat, um, we want to make sure we're cutting down as much as possible. So if these are fats that are solid at room temperature. You almost can see them like if you've left your plate a little while and it starts to congeal and the plate becomes solid, that's a solid fat. Mostly this comes from uh, animal proteins. It does come from uh, butter comes from dairy. Uh, we don't really see it in milk because milk is homogenized, so it doesn't become solid at room temperature, but if it was not homogenized, milk would separate and you would see that uh, whole milk and 2% milk are quite high in saturated fat. 2% milk, so it's five grams of saturated fat. It sounds like such a low number. You're like, oh, it's only, it's only 2%, but it, it's really a high fat food. It's just, you know, the way Marketers try to get you to think you're eating healthy when you're not. So if you can, you want to choose lower fat milk, lower fat yogurt, made from skim milk, if you can. I mean, some people really don't like the taste, but I'll say step down to 1% and then step down to 2 or it's a skim, sorry. And they're making skim milk creamier, so they are trying to get more people to decrease their saturated fat. I switched to skim milk. I'm very proud and happy yeah. to hear it. I, and once you switch to skim milk, you can't even imagine drinking no, whole milk. No, whole milk just sure. seems like cream. It, exactly right. <laughs> so, I mean, some ways you want to uh, maybe take the skin off your chicken or trim the fat off your meat or um, order meat that has uh, a lower content of fat, like loin or round in the title. Like prime rib is just full of fat. You can see it marbled all throughout. And, and avoiding anything that's solid at room temperature. And, and then reading the nutrition labels too. And trans fats are, um, they're man-made fats. So we take vegetable oil, we add a hydrogen to it, called hydrogenation. It's also called trans fatty acids. And, and these very much increase your cholesterol levels. So um, a lot of uh, pie crusts, pizza crusts, pastries, they have a lot of trans fat in them. But a lot of people are taking them out. I know Oreo took the trans fat out of their cookies. So they're, they are really trying to promote health in, in Americans, and they are cutting back on the amount of trans fat. So read the label. You really do want to avoid trans fats. Um, one question I get a lot is coconut oil. Because it's a plant, people think it's a healthy oil, but it's solid at room temperature. If you had a jar of coconut oil, it would just look like white glue. But it, um, it'll raise your cholesterol even more so than butter. So uh, it was a fad for a while, I'm not sure, but you, do, you definitely want to avoid the solid at room temperature fats. And then step six, go to the more liquid fats. These are the heart healthy, monounsaturated, polyunsaturated fats. Generally, they're from plant sources. Um, olives, soybean is the most common one in the United States. I always remember cop, C-O-P, canola, olive, and peanut. These are oils that are high in monounsaturated fats, and they actually help increase your good cholesterol and lower your bad cholesterol. So I have a question. Yeah. I'm the only person in the audience. <laughs> uh, so canola oil and vegetable oil, 
are one of, are one of the better oils. They're not yes. as bad because they have a bad rap. They do have a bad rap. The canola oil and vegetable oil, they're absolutely fine. They're absolutely fine. And I think people hear that olive oil is so good for you and they think, well, I'll fry in olive oil. And that's not a healthy uh, choice Procedure. either. I mean, you can certainly drizzle olive oil in your salad uh, as a replacement to salad dressing. But you, it is still a fat. It is still high in calories, so if you're watching your weight. But they are the better heart health fats. And they're also in um, walnuts and um, a lot of plant sources for the monounsaturated fats. But yeah, canola, sunflower, soybean, that's the most common. Good. And step number seven is to increase your omega-3 fatty acids. Um, primarily, uh, we can't make these. It's an essential fatty acid. We get it from our diet. It's mostly found in the fatty fishes. Um, salmon, albacore, tuna, herring um, are high in omega-3 fatty acids. And these have a lot of heart benefits. Um, they help decrease arrhythmias, which are incorrect heartbeats. Uh, they help decrease plaque formation in your arterial wall. They help with the cholesterol. So uh, you want to really want to try the American Heart Association recommends two servings of fish per week. And that's about a three and a half ounce piece of fish. Um, there was a big scare with methylmercury and a lot of people weren't eating as much fish. Um, but the EPA and the FDA did a, a major study and they tried to classify all the fishes that were safe, they really aimed it towards pregnant people because uh, they really wanted them to have adequate omega-3 fatty acids. And they found that 90% um, of fish that Americans eat fall into the safe category. Uh, you would want to avoid shark, uh, swordfish, marlin, like things you need a team of people to fish for uh, because they eat other fish. Um, they're, uh, they more likely have mercury and um, the smaller fish who really feed on algae, that's where they get their omega-3s. Uh, those are the ones we're gonna eat, like herring, trout, you know, your usual most common fishes. If you don't like fish or if you're allergic to fish, um, you can get omega-3s from flaxseed oil, uh, from soybeans, from chia. Um, I generally don't recommend a fish oil supplement, but certainly talk to your doctor if you have heart disease and you're allergic to fish and you would like to increase your amount of omega-3 fatty acids, uh, then they might recommend a fish oil supplement. Hmm. And eighth step is to read the food labels. So the American Heart Association wants to make it easy and they've made this um, stamp that they put on the package and it's on Cheerio boxes and things like that. So it has the red heart with the stamp right in it. Although there are different versions. I mean, there's a little red heart healthy. I don't know if you can see it. It's pretty far away, but. Oh, you can hold it up. Hold it up again. I zoomed in. You can zoom in on the little heart healthy on the oatmeal. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <My bad> away. <laughs> so they are trying to make it a little easier and they've redone some of the food labels. But definitely look at the amount of servings per container because they do like to say, oh, this is this many calories, but there could be three servings in the container. So you have to multiply everything by the number of servings. Most of us, if we make a can of soup, we're going to eat the whole can of soup. So you have to multiply the amount of servings in the container because uh, they do try to make it look like it's a little lower calories that way. And you can see how much fat um, total fat, saturated fat, it'll break down the trans fats. Um, so you can see, and what I like to do is see how, my, how many grams of fat. They used to put calories from fat. They have it on this example here. Calories from fat, 90 out of 160 calories. That's a high fat food. Definitely want to bring it down um, to less than 30% of total fat from calories and less than 10% of saturated fat, but even less than that because we only we want you to have like about 6 to 11, depending on your size and your saturated fat per day. But you can also check the sodium and the potassium. If you're trying to compare two items, you know, definitely pick the one that has less sodium. Um, it'll tell you the fiber, and that's like you said, if you're looking for a high fiber bread, 
you were looking for one that has about three grams of fiber and 100% whole wheat bread, but um, it might say seven grain, and then you look at the fiber and there's one gram of fiber. So definitely look at the, the food label. And um, about diets, so there is, um, these are the number one for decreasing heart risk, the DASH diet, the Mediterranean diet, they're always number one, and the Ornish diet, which they're all basically following the eight steps that we just talked about. They focus on fresh fruits and vegetables, freshly not processed foods, nuts and seeds and beans and plant foods, um, low fat meat and dairy. So pretty much, and whole grain, pretty much everything we've just talked about is the cornerstone of all three of the most uh, beneficial diets. This is the DASH diet, which is specifically a diet for decreasing hypertension, for stopping hypertension. And this plan, you can see there's uh, whole grains, fruits, vegetables, low fat or non fat dairy, lean meats and fish, nuts, seeds, and legumes, and very limited fats and sweets. So everything we've just talked about. Um, this is the diet for specifically decreasing hypertension. Um, I get this question very frequently, can I eat eggs? If I have high cholesterol or if I have heart disease, can I eat eggs? And the answer is yes. Um, they did a study of 40,000 men and 80,000 women and they found no increase in cardiovascular disease with one egg per day. So if you have had a stroke or if you've had, had a heart attack, I might limit it to three per week, three times a week, but absolutely I'm a big uh, proponent of eggs. They're so high in protein, but they do have fat, so uh, we just keep it on. But absolutely you can have your eggs. The other one I get is, uh, which is better, butter or margarine, and the answer is really neither. Um, you want to have your liquid olive oil, or I like the I can't believe it's not butter spray. Uh, the more liquid, the better. And we have a mindful program here, and Sodexo specifically wrote recipes that were a little higher in fruit and vegetables, that do lower sodium, that try to utilize the whole grains and the lean meats. So um, if, you, if you want to try them, we do focus probably after COVID in the Cove or the mindful recipes because they are specifically following these eight steps to make sure you're uh, improving your heart health. So you usually can find the mindful options, as Alana said, in the Cove at lunch, as things go a little bit uh, back, uh, more and more back to normal, and then also in the dining room when we go back to um, sit down dining, there's also always a mindful option. That's all I have. I can't well, wait to see everybody. Thank you, Alana. I think, uh, I think everybody's going to enjoy this. Uh, I had some residents asking for a nutrition video, which is the reason we did this. So uh, enjoy, and we're going to try to put together, me, Larry and I and the team, another video, maybe a kitchen tour or something. So watch out for that. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Alana.